I recently interviewed a guy for a sales role, and he appeared to have a number of the qualities that I look for in someone who has the potential to be a superstar. He was determined. He had a relentlessness about him, and he was he was definitely focused. You could see he was zoned in. If he got if he got the bit between his teeth on something, you could tell that he was going to chew into it. But I wasn't sure if he had the drive to be a champion. I wasn't sure if he had the passion for the fight that would surely come if he was going to strive to be the best of the best. And so I brought him back for a second interview because I really wanted to x-ray the guy's DNA. I mean, I wanted, to, I wanted to peel back the layers and see if the guy really did have the characteristics that would determine in the long run if this guy was going to be a winner. And I asked him a lot of questions around his motivations, what inspires him, what goals does he have, what does he want to be a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. You know, how does he view the concept of recognition versus winning, or the concept of money versus recognition. I mean, I really look to find out where this guy stood deep within the core of his being, within his soul. Did he have the fight? Did he have the drive? Did he have the enthusiasm? Because, you know what? He just wasn't selling himself. He wasn't putting himself over. And I even said to him, I said, you know, what is it? What is it that really is going to get you going? And he said to me, he said to me, competing. Competing to be the best. He said the thing that inspires him most is fighting to win and, and wanting to rise above, wanting to be a, a cut above. He said he, he cannot settle for second best. And we, we talked a lot about his, his will to compete. And I, I said to him, I said, you know, for someone who's talking as much about competing as you are, I said, I'll tell you, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come across. I hear the words. But I'm not sure they have they have a lot of meaning behind them. I, I said to him, you know, you, you come across a bit understated, and he was. He was very the thing about him was very low key. All right, he was very. I said you come across as being a bit low energy. I said, you know, I hear the words that you're saying, but I'm, you know, but I'm not sure I believe it. At least you're not converting me. All right, you're not you're not making a believer out of me. I said even even you know even your voice is a bit even keel, if not monotone. I said, is the passion really there? Do you really, I mean, do you really have that spirit within you? Or are they just words? And, you know, he, he agreed with me. He, he agreed that, you know what? This is, this is him. This is his persona. He's a bit understated. He's a bit low-key. He's a bit under the radar. Um, and I, I, I said to him, I said, well, what do you mean this is who you are? He goes, well, I'm just being me. He said, you know, this is, this is who I am. And I said, really? This is who you are? I said, let me ask you a question. Let's say you've had a terrible day. Let's say things aren't going your way. You're frustrated. You're downtrodden. You're forlorn. You're not getting what you want out of life. You're depressed. I said, let's say you have all these emotions going on inside you, but you got to meet a client. you got to get face-to-face -face with a client. you got to get on the phone and speak to, to a new client. I said, are you going to uh, uh, communicate those feelings to the client? Because you're just going to be who you are, right? And he said, well, no, 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 of course not. No, when I, listen, when I get on the phone with a client or I get face-to-face -face with a client, you know, that part, that part of me, I'm going to put it to one side. Yeah, they're not going to see that, all right? They're going to see a, a positive, upbeat individual. And I said, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it's not about, it's not about being yourself, okay? But who you are is not all that you are. Because when the time comes, you are the man that you need to be. If, look, if all you are is who you are, then that's all you're ever going to become. And if you're striving for success, if you are, if you're fighting for something better than what you have, if you're, if you're on a quest for greatness, then you've got to adopt the state of mind of that future champion of that of that winner down the road now it doesn't magically appear when you reach your destination all right you often have to slip those shoes on now and walk the walk a long time before you ever get to where it is you want to go so to me that old 
that old phrase, being yourself, or I'm just being myself, that's a cop-out, okay? That's, that's a lazy man's way of, of going about his, his day-to-day push, his day-to-day make it happen. To the, 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 the toing and froing of an average man is fraught with, I am who I am. I'm just being myself, okay? That's a cop-out. All right, that's that's an excuse for not doing whatever it takes, being whoever you need to be to get the job done. But I'll tell you what, this being yourself crap, being yourself relieves you of the responsibility you have to yourself to seize the moment. You've heard people say, look, you know what, don't stress, don't worry about it. Just be yourself. You'll do just fine. You know what? Being yourself is code for, yeah, don't trouble yourself, don't bother yourself to do what it is you've got to do to be better than who you are, to be greater than who you are right now. You know what I, you know what I hate? I hate when people say, well, you know what? It didn't work out. I, I was just being myself. I guess they just don't appreciate me for who I am. Oh, my God. Look, remember, you are not all that you are, okay? You, what you are is not all that you are. Who you are should always reflect who it is you want to become, right? They, they say you got to have a war cry. Yeah, you got to have, they say you got to have a war face when you go into battle. They say that when the bell rings or the whistle blows, you got to put your game face on. But when does the bell actually ring? When does, the, when does the game actually begin? I'll tell you what. It, be, it, it begins a long, long time before that whistle ever blows. Believe me. Okay? I've got, I've got a quote for you. I found this quote. It's a great quote. kind of sums up some of the stuff that I'm trying to say here. It's by a guy by the name of T. Allen Armstrong. What he said was, Champions do not become champions when they win the match. But in the hours, the months, and the years that they spend preparing for victory. The victorious performance itself is merely the demonstration of those championship characteristics. The fight, the striving, the pushing, yeah, bringing out who it is you want to be when you reach that destination and, and taking those qualities and bringing them back in time to where you are now and adopting that persona, adopting those beliefs, adopting those actions, adopting that, that war face, that game face now, that's everything. That's who you are. Look, don't sit around waiting for the bell to ring. Because I got news for you. You might just not hear it. Or it might just ring without you. Rise to the occasion now. This way, when the magic moment you've been waiting all your life for finally does come, you'll realize that you arrived at your destination long before you ever got there. Rise. Rise. Rise to the occasion now. Go for it! Rise up!